It's no secret that Winston Churchill was one of the key figures in the Allied victory against the Nazis in World War II. But did you know he was a prisoner of war and helped create concentration camps? In this video, I'll tell you six amazing stories about the life and career of Sir Winston Churchill. So I recommend you watch until the end not to miss any details. Winston Churchill was born on November 30th, 1874, at Blenheim Palace, Oxfordshire, England. During World War I, Churchill served as First Lord of the British Admiralty and was one of the key coordinators of British naval efforts. He also served on the Western Front, but his involvement in the war was not successful, and he was forced to resign. During World War II, Churchill led the British resistance against Nazi Germany and became one of the most prominent leaders in the world. After World War II, Churchill continued to serve in British politics and on the international stage, but his health began to deteriorate. He suffered a stroke in 1953 and retired from the position of Prime Minister in 1955. Churchill died on January 24, 1965, at the age of 90, in London. He is remembered as one of the most important leaders in British and world history. However, few people know that Churchill was a talented painter and produced more than 500 paintings throughout his life. Yes, it's true. Churchill discovered his love for painting in the 1910s during a difficult period in his political career. He turned to painting as a way to relax and relieve stress. Churchill's paintings were varied in style and themes, but most of them were landscapes and still lifes. He mainly painted in watercolor and oil on canvas, but also experimented with other techniques, such as pastel and charcoal. Churchill traveled to many places around the world and painted scenes from his travels. His works include landscapes from France, Morocco, Italy, and Greece, as well as views of the UK, including landscapes from the coast of Kent, where he spent holidays. Although Churchill was never formally trained in art, he dedicated himself to improving his skills and sought advice from professional artists, including his friend, the French painter Paul Mays. Churchill was also influenced by artists such as John Singer Sargent and Paul Cezanne. His paintings were publicly exhibited at various exhibitions, including at the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Many of his works were given as gifts to friends, world leaders, and family members. Today, many of Churchill's paintings can be found in private collections or museums, including the Churchill House in Chartwell, Kent, where he lived for many years. Churchill's skill in painting may have been one of the lesser-known facets of his life, but it is a testament to his creativity and talent. And an interesting fact about Churchill's career is that he won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1953, and few people know about it. He was the first British statesman to receive this award. The Nobel Prize in Literature recognized Churchill as a writer of great skill and range, having published various works throughout his career, including biographies, memoirs, essays, and histories. Among his most famous works are The Second World War, a six-volume series on World War II, a history of the English-speaking peoples, a four-volume series on the history of Britain and its English-speaking countries, and his autobiography, My Early Life. However, it may be Churchill's oratory skills that have most caught the attention of the Swedish Academy. His abilities as a speaker were widely recognized by his people and the world. His inspiring words helped raise the morale of Britain during World War II. Churchill's famous phrases, such as blood, toil, tears, and sweat, and we shall fight on the beaches, have become iconic and inspired the British people during difficult times. If you want to learn more about Sir Winston Churchill, be sure to check out the links I've left in the description. But those who see the images of Winston Churchill with a top hat and cane cannot imagine that he was an avid polo player and continued to play until about 50 years of age. Churchill began playing polo while serving in the British Army in India in 1896. He quickly fell in love with the sport and continued to play for many years, even while serving as a politician and statesman. He took the sport seriously and trained diligently to improve his skills. Churchill became known for his riding ability and the accuracy of his shots. He also engaged in polo competitions at an amateur and professional level and was known to play in charity matches for various causes. Churchill was also known for being an advocate of the sport and believed that polo was an important way to promote friendship and cultural ties between Britain and other nations. He organized polo matches in London for foreign ambassadors and diplomats, as well as for members of the British aristocracy. 
Although Churchill stopped playing polo in middle age, he continued to follow the sport and engage in its promotion. He was named honorary president of the British Polo Federation in 1950 and continued to be an enthusiastic advocate of the sport until his death in 1965. Winston Churchill went through very difficult times when he was imprisoned and became a prisoner during the Boer War in South Africa. Winston Churchill was a war correspondent during the Boer War, a conflict that occurred between the United Kingdom and the Boer Republics in South Africa in the late 19th century. In 1899, Churchill was in South Africa covering the war when he decided to join the British forces as an officer. However, in December 1899, Churchill was captured by the Boer forces during a surprise attack on the train he was traveling on. He was sent to Pretoria prison, where he was detained under difficult and precarious conditions. While in prison, Churchill began to devise an escape plan. He pretended to have a serious illness and asked to be transferred to a nearby military hospital. After a few days, he managed to escape from prison by disguising himself as a cleaning worker and fleeing through a window. With the help of several accomplices, Churchill traveled almost 300 miles through enemy territory to reach a safe location. He wrote about his escape in a book titled, The Story of the South African War, which became a bestseller and helped increase his fame in Britain. Churchill's escape from Pretoria prison was a great adventure and a demonstration of his determination and courage. Did you know that Churchill was a prisoner of war and managed to escape from prison like a movie adventure script? That alone is worth your registration here on the channel. Every week I bring historical information like this. Join our community and don't miss any more content posted. And speaking of movie scripts, depression was a disease that accompanied Churchill throughout his life, and this drama may have been his greatest battle. Winston Churchill faced depression for much of his life and described it in his autobiography as a black dog that followed him everywhere. He fought the illness for years and on numerous occasions described how it affected his mood and ability to work. Churchill faced his first major depression crisis when he was in his 20s during the Boer War. He wrote to his mother, I don't like to be alone, even in the country. I get very depressed. I feel incapable of anything. Later, he also faced periods of depression during World War I and after losing the election in 1945. Despite his struggle with depression, Churchill found ways to cope with the illness. He worked a lot, often spending hours writing and painting. He also enjoyed being outdoors, horse riding or fishing to help relieve stress and anxiety. Churchill was also known for his sense of humor and self-deprecating jokes. He believed that humor was a way of dealing with pain and sadness and used it to deal with his own personal struggles. In his autobiography, Churchill described his experience with depression and how he learned to live with the illness. He wrote, I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I'm grateful for having gone through it. Now I'm able to see things from a wider perspective and appreciate life in a way that I might not have been able to before. One moment that brought great regret to Winston Churchill was his participation in the creation of concentration camps to weaken the resistance of the Boers. Yes, Winston Churchill was one of the individuals responsible for creating concentration camps during the Boer War in South Africa in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. At the time, Churchill was a young officer and war correspondent. He supported the British policy of scorched earth, which involved burning farms and displacing civilians to concentration camps to weaken the Boer resistance. Churchill even described the concentration camps as a way to solve the problem of Boer civilians, who were considered collaborators with Boer fighters. The concentration camps were created in 1900 and were terrible places where people were kept in unsanitary conditions without enough food, clean water, or basic sanitation. Approximately 29,000 people died of starvation, disease, and lack of adequate medical care in the camps. A large portion of the prisoners were women and children. Later, Churchill deeply regretted his participation in the creation of the concentration camps and publicly apologized for his actions. He wrote, It was a cruel and repellent policy, which I have always felt ashamed of. Although he regretted his participation in the creation of the concentration camps, Churchill's history and connection with them are still controversial. Some argue that his actions were a reflection of the thinking of the time and that he acted in accordance with British government policies. Others criticize his stance towards the Boers and consider his actions to be unacceptable and immoral. 
Sir Winston Churchill was one of the most prominent leaders in British and world history, who led the British resistance against Nazi Germany during World War II. He was also a talented painter and a writer of great reach. His skills as a speaker were also widely recognized, and his famous phrases have become iconic and inspiring. His life and trajectory are full of achievements and moments of difficulty. In addition to his escape from prison, Churchill also struggled throughout his life with depression and regret for having contributed to the application of cruel and unacceptable measures against African peoples in the late 19th century. In summary, Sir Winston Churchill's trajectory is full of achievements and legacies that make him an inspiring figure for many. Another fascinating and inspiring figure is Albert Einstein. So, I'm going to leave a video on the screen where I talk about seven surprising facts about Albert Einstein and the truth behind them. I highly recommend that you watch it because it's a must-see and a lot of fun. Do you want to help the channel grow and reach people all over the world? Then leave a like and help our community reach unimaginable places. Thank you so much for making it this far, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.